I'm Matt Kenny, and here's some Canadian news. I know it can be hard to understand what the politicians are really saying, so I'm here to translate it for you. Um, the report says that Commissioner Allen specifically can't parse out the effect of environmental campaigns hampering the oil industry from the impact of the general reduction in the demand for oil and gas. So how fair is it to blame environmentalists for the loss of jobs in the oil industry, industry when we know that it is inherently a cycle of up and downs? Well, I think, uh, um, as you can see in the report, the, the, the commissioner could not conclude that the campaigns were the sole cause of uh, project cancellations, uh, pipeline cancellations, pipeline vetoes. And I think he's, he's documented that uh, the estimate of those project cancellations was between $100 billion and $129 billion. He can't point in a public inquiry and quasi-judicial proceedings with a certainty of proof that those campaigns were the sole cause. We know that market factors are a play, but what we can't, we can't deny is those environmental organizations celebrated. They celebrated when all those projects were, were killed or vetoed or cancelled, and they boasted that it was their work that cancelled them, and people lost their jobs. And just in the last few days, as we see Quebec, Quebec is banning uh, the development of their natural resources. I saw this morning an environmental organization tweeting and taking credit for it, saying it took years of work to get to that point, years of work. And now, and they say, we, we want other provinces to do the same as Quebec. We don't know if that organization receives foreign funding. Problem is, it's not, there's not transparency. And the problem is, it's less transparent today than it was five years ago because they know that, that, uh, that we're, we're on to them, that we're tracking it, we're tracing it, we're trying to understand where their money, they've become more, more, um, uh, there's been less transparency. So those, those groups take credit for it, and I think uh, all you have to do is take one look at what happened to Northern Gateway Pipeline. I saw that, I experienced it from day one as they stacked the regulatory proceedings with a mob the mic process, as they litigated when they didn't like the result. They had activists. I had a colleague that got uh, molasses dumped on him to, to, to replicate an oil spill. These groups were real. They targeted, they celebrated it when the projects were canceled. And I'm pretty convinced that they, they're not the sole cause, they're a pretty darn big cause of what happened to all our energy projects in Alberta. We needed a boogeyman Albertans can be mad at, and we went with activists. We took some heat for shitting on Albertan activists, so we're trying to shift blame to American activists. Some activists did an anecdote to one of my oil worker friends. So all activists are evil, and they killed your jobs with molasses or something. Um, as a follow-up going forward, what plans does your government have to amend legislation to ensure that nonprofits um, disclose their funds, for example, or just amend legislation to um, reach the goals that you've stated just there? And how does that align with your government's stated goal of cutting red tape for organizations? That's an excellent question. Um, there's a lot of recommendations in there about uh, amendments to the Societies Act and there's work underway, we're taking a look at all those recommendations and comparing it to our legislation. So that work is, is underway. And uh, you know what, if, it's, if, if something were to be amended that added red tape to save billions of dollars for the province and to save the energy sources of the future, I think uh, that's not something that people would be too offended, offended about. Now the other thing that's important there is not only legislation in Alberta, but federal legislation. For the most part, uh, a lot of these disclosure uh, requirements are in the federal legislation. So we're going to continue to advocate and to push the federal government for those types of disclosure disclosure laws. A number, number of work was underway uh, previously um, uh, under the, the previous conservative government to amend that legislation. That work was stopped when the Trudeau government came, came in. And incidentally, when you look through that report and you want to start looking through the, uh, the Deloitte report, you're going to find that the uh, organizations that were found to have participated in the campaign, because the, the number of Engo organizations in Canada, 
um, the, the federal government funding to those exact same organizations increased by something like 798 percent after 2015. So we, we're in a situation now where we have the federal government funding those organizations that are targeting Alberta, Alberta energy projects along with uh, multi-billion dollar foreign funding. That needs to be looked at and that needs to be considered as well. More than a few farmers have called screaming that this is enough. The people are figuring out they actually have the power to force their government to regulate out of control industries. And we can't have that. We're looking into the problem before it becomes a problem for our hold over the political system. We have to put up more red tape to protect our oil and gas from greedy charities. This is all the federal government's fault. The conservative government would have never let this happen to poor defenseless oil and gas corporations.